Thank you for joining us tonight. We're here in Lake Worth, Florida, and it's Word Alive Fellowship, and we are so grateful to have everyone in person and everyone that's tuning in via YouTube. I'm Pastor Bob. The Word Alive Fellowship is in its 32nd year of ministry, and we're learning a lot about the character of God, the nature of God, the love of God, expressed perfectly in Jesus. So, if you'd like to contact me on Pastor Bob, you could call me at area code 561-331-7533. And I'd just like to offer up a prayer before we begin. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us together. Lord, thank you for Tina and Long and Jaden and Ron. Thank you for Maria and my wife and daughter that are coming along with Carlos and his whole family. Thank you for Matthew able to be with us after getting this operation done in the hospital. Thank you that he could be here with us tonight along with George. Thanks for blessing George, Father, helping us tonight. And Larry, who's been with us also for many years, but thank you for Larry's being here tonight. Father God, let your word live richly within us so that we may understand your goodness, that all your ways are pleasant ways and all your paths are peace. Help us now, God of love and peace, come to know you better Give us your spirit to understand how high, deep, wide, and long the love of Jesus is. Let us know this love that's better than we can ever understand or explain, but we can certainly experience your love. And we ask that we'll be filled with the spirit of your love tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to borrow here from the letter of 1 John in chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, just borrowing from the letter of 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Everyone that loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his son into the world so that we would live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the reason that our sins have been removed. Atoning sacrifice for our sins means that our sins have been removed by Jesus. Dear friends, since God so loved us, then we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, then God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and that He lives in us because He's given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever believes in the Son, God lives in that person. And that person lives in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in that person. So I'm going to pause right there, having mentioned what 1 John 4, verses 7 through 16 says to us. We just ask for a moment that, Lord, you will speak the truth of your love to us. 
so that we will be able to rely on your love, depend on your love. Because you are the source of love. Lord, we can't produce this spirit of love because it's not our nature. But you, Father God, are able to produce this love in us because love is your nature and your spirit is living in us and Lord, our spirit is living in you. So we pray that you will show us your love for us so high, deep, wide, and long, that we would be able to know this love, even though we couldn't explain it beyond anything that we could understand or figure out. But Lord, let us experience this love to the full measure of the fullness of what is in your nature, God, the love that is absolutely unstoppable. Your love never fails. Nothing will separate us from your love. Not death or the other issue called life. Not demons, not angels, not the present things going on, not the future things happening, no powers, nothing that's high or low, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us, Father God, from your love that is perfectly expressed in your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jesus said something very interesting to me, taken from the Gospel of John, written by the same man who wrote the letter that I just quoted from called 1 John. That's his first letter that he wrote. I just quoted from that. But he also wrote a book called the Gospel of John. And he said in chapter 15, beginning at verse 1, that he is the source of the love of God. He's the source of the happiness and the peace and the patience and the kindness and the goodness of God. He's the one that gives it to us as a gift because we don't have it in our nature. So what Jesus did is he's talking to people that understand that when you have a tree and you have fruit on the tree, then there is a, a source of life that is contained in a seed. And when you plant that seed, eventually that seed becomes a tree. And Jesus is comparing himself to being like a tree. And then the idea of the fruit that is on that tree is like a symbol of love and joy and peace and goodness and kindness and all of these things that we all want to experience, well, Jesus says, I'm the source of that love. I'm like the tree. And, 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 he, and he calls it a vine. Because when I was in Israel, and Jesus was living in Israel at the time he was speaking, you know, I saw a vine. It was a tree. And, and the branches were, were all curved. You know, They were all going in these directions. And it wasn't like a straight tree. But Jesus said, I am this true vine, and you are like branches. And by you staying in me, then my love will be your love, and then my joy will be your joy, and my peace will be your peace, and my patience will be your patience. And everything that is in the character of Jesus, he will be able to give that to us like we're a branch, and we can't produce this love on our own, because we're just like a branch, but we have to stay in the vine, we have to stay in the spirit of Jesus, and then he will produce it. And the type of love that he gives us is without end. It's love that never fails. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's love that in one part of the Bible it says love carries all the burdens, love mm -hmm. bears responsibility for all things, love never fails. Well. This is the love that comes from the true vine. And we're like branches. And we display the fruit of that love. You know, people can see the fruit. Like we are like a branch that can show the fruit to the world. But it doesn't come from us. It comes from Him. You know, like it said in what we quoted a minute ago. Remember when I said the letter of 1 John in chapter 4, we started out with verse 7, Dear friends, let's love one another because love comes from God. It doesn't come from us. 
because it's not our nature to love like that, but it comes from Him. And His love is so great that absolutely nothing can separate us from that love. Nothing. No evil, no bad issue, no sickness, not even death itself. Nothing can separate us from His love. So Jesus is saying, back to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. And, and you can translate the next verse to say that every tree that, you know, let's say every branch, every branch that does not show the fruit will be lifted up and, and the, you know, the word in the original language here, sometimes some Bibles will say, well, well, he'll just take away the branch. But, but really the word, even though it could mean take away in some places, it doesn't mean take away here. It means lift up the branch. Because what would happen is the branch in Israel that wasn't getting enough sunlight needed to be lifted up because it was drooping to the ground and it needed to be lifted up and get in the sunlight, you know? So that's what Jesus is saying here in John 15, 2. That, that He will lift up every branch in Him that's not showing the fruit. And every branch that is showing the fruit, He'll prune or clean that branch so that it will bear even more fruit. And, and Maria, what do you have in verse 3? Like in your Gospel of John, chapter 15. What do you have in verse 3? You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. You're already clean. You're already pruned. You're already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. And then he says, remain in me. Like stay in me. And I will remain in you. I will stay in you. No branch can show this fruit by itself. The branch must stay in the vine. And then how does it say it right after that, Maria? Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So, so you can't show the fruit unless you stay in me because remember Jesus is the source of that love or that joy or that peace. Jesus has got the ability to hang in there. Jesus has got the ability to be kind or nice, to be good and to be faithful and to be gentle. Jesus has got all that ability because He's got that nature. Even though we don't have it, He's got it. And He says, I'm like the vine and you're like the branch. So this is why we like to talk about Jesus. We like to talk about His relationship with us because the more we get into His mind, the more we get into His heart, then His Spirit will get more into us, into the mind, into our heart, and then the more that happens, we're going to show more of that fruit. And there's another part of the Bible which we could relate to this, and George, we recall this one from your own Galatians 5 because you've shared a lot on Galatians 5, well, this one is in Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 22. This is Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. It's talking about the fruit that is produced by the Spirit, the same thing as the fruit that comes from the true vine. It's the same thing. It's Jesus' Spirit, right? So, Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the Spirit, or the fruit produced by the Spirit, is love. Well, what kind of love? The love that can't fail, the love that can never be defeated, the love that always wins. You know, that's the love that is produced by the Spirit. Well, what about the joy? You know, what about the joy? Well, the, the prophet Nehemiah, thousands of years ago, said in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, that the Lord's joy is our strength. So when we are getting His joy because of His Spirit in us, then we've got a joy that actually makes us strong. Not that we're strong on our own, but He gives us His strength. And so it goes on to say 
the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. And then Galatians 5, 22 goes on to say, peace. And there's a word in Jesus' Hebrew Bible for peace. It's shalom. And it means well-being. It means healthiness. It means that there's no worry. It means that you know that everything is going to work out together for good. Because, because you can rest in knowing that God's going to make everything good. So, this comes from the Spirit. Not only love and joy and shalom, that peace of mind, that well-being, that healthiness, and lack of worry, but also the ability to hang in there. Some Bibles will say patience, but it really means the ability to hang in there no matter what is going on. The word literally means to stay under the pressure and not cave under the pressure. To stay under the pressure and not cave in. It means to hang in there. You know, well, that comes from the Spirit. I can't hang in there on my own, but the Spirit can produce that in me as I get that from Jesus, the source of the vine that produces in me his quality of being able to keep going even though I don't have any strength to keep going. That comes from him. And then it goes on to say kindness and the idea of being a nice person. Well, that comes from him. Kindness. And then goodness. Well, I don't have the goodness in my nature, but he has the goodness in his nature. And then to stay in him, to speak of him, to pray to him, to hear about him, and getting into his mind and heart, then more and more his spirit gets into our heart and his spirit gets into our mind. So it's his goodness and his faith because he's got this faith that never wavers. It's a faith that never loses power it's a faith that is consistent that is going to be there all the time or it's his faith but he produces that in us his spirit produces that faith in us so we as a branch can show the fruit of having that faith that's not from us but from him and then talks about gentleness you know well that comes from him and then and then it talks about the idea of Control, because a lot of English Bibles in Galatians 5, now in verse 23, will say self-control. But I don't see the word self in the original language. I just see it as control, because he's the one in control. And the Spirit is always reassuring us of that. And he's in control to make everything work together for good. Because we all fit into his plan. Why? Because he created all human children and therefore all human children are God's children at the same time as the children of human parents or also the parents or let us say God is like our parent because he's the one that created us he gave us the human parents that we have he created the first man and the woman Adam and his wife Eve he created them without even using human parents to bring them into the world. He just you know, took the, the dust of the ground and made a, a form, physical form, and breathed life into that form, and all of a sudden you have a living man and a living woman. And then they have children, and now our world has been filled with their children. But the whole world is filled with not only human children, but children of God. Because he created human children so he can say about those children, they're my own children, because I created them. And God, in many passages in the Bible, compares himself to being like a parent. And we could go into a lot of verses that say this, because I'm writing something right now that is explaining every passage in the Bible that is related to this theme of God comparing himself to a father and a mother bringing human children into the world and using human parents to do it. So, what I'm going to do now is to just take a moment and ask a blessing, Father God. We have human children here tonight, and I want to bless them. 
I want to bless them in the name of the true vine. I want to bless them in the name of the Son of God, the Savior of the world. I want to pray a blessing over Long and Jaden tonight. I pray, Father God, that Your Spirit of love come over them and that Your joy and peace surround them that the ability to hang in there in life would be a strength that you would give them and that they would experience what it means to be kind because you are kind. That they would experience your goodness because your spirit of goodness would be channeled through them and that they would have the faith that you give them. That they would be gentle. That they would realize that you're in control because you're going to make everything good in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray this blessing over Long and Jaden. And I also pray a blessing over Ron and Tina because I feel, God, that when I see them, I see that your love has brought them together and that what your love does in their life is to produce your character, your spirit of kindness and gentleness and the ability to be patient and hang in there. All of that good stuff comes from you as a source. So I pray a blessing over Ron and Tina to always be reminded, Lord, that you started a good work in Ron and Tina when they met and you have a good purpose for them to know each other better and to know you better so that they can know the best of each other more and realize that you'll never stop letting your love be channeled through their lives. You'll never stop letting your joy and peace come into their emotions so that they'll know what it is to feel your joy. That they'll know what it is to have your peace. And to know what it is to hang in there as you're able to do that. Because they won't be able to say, I did it on my own. It was the grace of God. It was the gift of God. It was the life of God that just took over my life and made it all work together for good. Well, Lord, I pray this blessing for Ron and Tina and for Long and Jaden, and I do the same, Father God, for Matthew, because you began a good work in him, Lord Jesus, and you're going to carry that on to completion until the day, Jesus, when you come back to our world in your own manhood and you let Matthew know personally that you love him and that he obviously will love you back because that's the way your love draws us to you. It's your love for us that draws us back to you. So Lord, I pray your blessing over Matthew in this way and over George and, and Larry. And thank you, Father God, for bringing these brothers along with Maria. Thank you, Father God, for each person here tonight. Lord Jesus, they're a gift that you've given to me to have them, each one of them, in my life. So I bless them now in the name of the Lord Jesus and ask, Father God, that you would make us rooted, that you would make us strong and firm, you would make us be not moved back and forth, that we would just be as strong as your Spirit would make us, which is so strong we could never be moved because we are stable, we are secure, because we are branches that are in the true vine. And Jesus, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we keep relying on your love, Lord Jesus. And that's why I want to say real quick again, the same words that I said at the beginning of this time of sharing. Remember when I shared this from the letter of 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. But if somebody doesn't love, they don't know God because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His Son into the world in order for us to live through Him like being a branch that gets life from the vine so we can have the character of God to be lived out in our bodies so that 
the world can be a good place to live through us being here? Well, 1 John 4.10 goes on to say, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the reason that our sins are taken away. Dear friends, since God so loved us, then we ought to love one another, but we can't do that on our own because He's the source of the love. So we can't do it just because we ought to, just because we think we should. It's just a matter of Him giving us the love, giving us the joy, giving us the peace, giving us the patience, the kindness, and the goodness. So understanding that, we get on to verse 12, which is 1 John 4, 12. No one's ever seen God, but we love one another, and that means that it shows God lives in us because the fruit shows that we're connected to the vine. The, the love that's displayed in our life means that we're staying in Jesus, who is the source of that love. So no one's ever seen God, but by us loving one another, it shows that God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. And then it goes on to say, remember in verse 13, this is how we know that we live in Him, and He lives in us, because He's given us of His Spirit. In verse 14, and we've seen and testified that the Father sent His Son be the savior of the world. And then what does it say in, say, verse 15, Maria? Who, or let's say whoever believes in the Son of God has God living in them and they live in God. Yeah. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. And that means all of us. All that God created, which is all people of the world. He loves us all the same, and He'll never stop loving any one of us ever. So through Him, we will continue to love one another. So we give thanks to you, God, because I'm going to offer this right now up to you, Lord. We know and rely on your love, Father God, for us, because we know, God, that your character is love. This is your nature. So as we live in love, we live in you, and you live in us. So we give thanks, Father God, that there is no fear in love. Father, we drop down to 1 John 4, 18. We drop down to verse 18. There's no fear in love because perfect love, which is your love, throws fear outside, like throwing out the garbage. Lord Jesus, there's no fear in love, but your perfect love throws fear outside because fear has to do with punishment. And we know that there's no punishment. You already took everybody's punishment and you put it to an end once and forever for all people. So now there's no punishment from you, God. Jesus, you came back to life to show us your love, to show us your joy, to show us your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your gentleness, your love us. And that is why the next verse says in 1 John 4, 19, we love God because he first loved us. We love each other because, God, you first loved us, and, and as the branch gets the life from the vine, then we have an endless supply of your love to give one another, and then we can even love ourselves. Because we know, Lord Jesus, that to love others is based on the fact that we realize, God, you love us, and we're simply passing on love that you put in our heart for our own self so that now we can just give that love to everyone around us. So, Father God, please encourage our hearts to know as we are knit together in love that we may be strong, Father God, in the grace which is the gift of your love that is in the person of Jesus, Lord, in whose name we give thanks. Amen.